Holy smokes, everyone. Chaos is erupting in China as the world's biggest housing market bubble literally collapses. These are crazy scenes everyone, because protests in China are not normal. But you know the saying, once people lose everything, they lose it. What you have to know right now, this is not me exaggerating it, this is serious. This situation that's going on in China with Evergrande is highly likely to lead to another global financial crisis. And I think foreign investors or people from US, Australia aren't taking this seriously. Because I'll bring up a chart here, everyone, and this is something I've showed before, but just to reiterate, if you think Australia's housing market, Canada, US, New Zealand housing markets are unaffordable, the UK, look at this, everybody. We see New York's income uh, to house price ratio. Again, these are just averages. Some people's incomes may be lower. We can see New York 9.3, Sydney 9.9, uh, all the way up there, Tokyo 13.3, and London 13.5. But look at China, everyone, and this shows how crazy the housing bubble is in China. And this will have big consequences across the rest of the world because it's not just China's money invested in this market. It's also U.S. money is in this market and other foreign uh, banks and other foreign corporations have lent money to developers in China. And also, what has China been doing around the world? They've been buying up real estate in the U.S., in Australia, in New Zealand, in Canada. So if their real estate market collapses and then they need money to cover their losses, well, what are they gonna do in other countries? They're gonna start selling off their assets in the US, Australia, Canada, etc. Because again, Shenzhen, the medium house price income, 46 times. Hong Kong, 46. Beijing, 45. This is the craziest housing market bubble I've ever seen. And we definitely have to worry in Australia because again, we've got a lot of foreign uh, Chinese investors in the Australian housing market, but also China's construction boom and them building all these ghost cities, all these apartments, um, they've been using a lot of Australia's resources like iron ore and coal. And it's been our mining industry that has got us out of the last two recessions in 2008 and 2020 because of booming commodity prices. But if there's a slowdown in China, we're gonna feel it very hard. And this is why the Aussie dollar has been dropping and iron ore has been tumbling. But let's have a deeper look and assess how dire a situation we're really in. Because I'll bring up another chart here, everybody. Corporate bond defaults in China have hit a record for the first half of 2021. We can see here in 2014, there was barely any defaults and they've been climbing rapidly since 2014 to 2020. And Evergrande, again, you may think it's just a small company. It's not that much debt. People, their debt and liabilities are $300 billion. That's right, US dollars, not yuan. And put that into perspective, let's have a look at some of the most indebted companies in the world. I'll bring up a chart here. As we can see, the company that used to be the most indebted in the world was AT&T, $147 billion. Then Ford Company, $114 billion. Uh, Verizon, $106 billion. Evergrande is nearly triple the most indebted companies in the world. And this could lead to another Lehman-like financial crisis. It's not me exaggerating. This is the facts when we look at the data. And what are we seeing right now? We're seeing a sell-off in the Asia markets. And look at China's Evergrande share price. It is down 82.45% over the past year. So it's looking like Evergrande is heading very, very close to bankruptcy without a Chinese Communist Party bailout, which they really don't want to do right now because they're trying to ease the real estate bubble in China. We're seeing they're clamping down on these billionaires in China and they're trying to create this common prosperity goal. And they have let 
over 300 real estate companies uh, in China go bankrupt. And listen to this, everyone. So analysts said, as well as the 300 billion in debt, the company has hundreds of uncompleted residential building projects and suppliers are shutting down construction sites because they are not being paid. And what are we seeing in China right now with these go cities? Many of these developments where the property developers have gone bankrupt, they're literally demolishing these buildings. And even our favorite investor, George Soros, has weighed in on the situation. So billionaire investor George Soros said in an opinion piece last month uh, in the Financial Times that China's economy could crash if Evergrande defaulted. And people, I don't see a way where they can't default without a huge bailout, which again, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't really want to do right now. So everyone, what does this mean in simple terms? This means like in 2008, where we learned something called counterparty risk, when one huge indebted corporation goes down, it has a ripple effect on all other corporations and confidence on that industry. So what will happen if Evergrande goes down with these $300 billion uh, in debt, this is going to cause a ripple effect throughout the Chinese economy. People are not going to want to buy these apartments anymore. There's going to be slower construction, slower building. That's going to be weaker demand from materials from other countries like Australia and throughout the rest of the world. The stock market in China will crash. Foreign investors will lose billions and billions of dollars. And this is going to weigh on growth in not just China, but the whole world. So like I said in my last video, this is a very serious situation and something that we have to watch closely. But what do you think? Let me know. Now for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.